At first, I operated without even a sign for the first month because I wanted my locals to understand who I am. So I actually went up to every customer and explained about our food. And some people, you know, because all the other ones are very reasonable, maybe. Like, I think it's one of the cheapest in the downtown area. And they would look at maybe a bluefin and be like, are you trying to rip me off? So I would bring, bring them a piece of the fish and so they can try and uh, tell them how it's made, how I'm doing it. That was like my daily routine for the first uh, two or three months. So in 2009, which um, then I was 14 years old, I decided to just get a job. And at that time, like Korean sushi restaurant was very popular. So I decided to um, go try out. Um, at that time, I wanted to make some money for my just daily spending. And then I knew that I was really into it. And then I started working full time not too long after. So I actually dropped out and worked, started working full-time in the sushi restaurant. It was just, um, I really enjoyed it. Like, it was just so much fun. And if I was good at it, um, I was recognized. And that part was a big thing at that age. Um, getting respected by somebody that's much older. And then I had a goal on my second year to open my restaurant in 10 years. So, which did happen um, actually about 10 days before my 10 year ended. Since I was so young, I was always the curious guy. Um, I would order fish with my own money um, through the restaurant. And when I didn't even know how to fillet the fish, I would fillet the fish <laughs> and threw away a lot of fish as well. So I was always the curious guy wanting to know how to do everything. So just um, in general, they say bluefin is like a diamond in the sea. Um, so it's the most expensive fish in the world. Um, I think uh, there's many reasons to that. The taste-wise, there's it's just, there's just so many textures, so many flavors you can get out of one fish. And they are one of the biggest fish that you can get. So usually the ones we bring in are about 380 to 400 pounds. Um, and once you taste it, I'm sure everyone will notice the difference between other fish. So the bluefin that we're using at the moment is from Mexico. Um, it's farmed in Mexico. Um, at the beginning, I tested a lot between a lot of different bluefins. There's the main one would be, I would say, Mexico and Japan. I would say there's uh, goods and bads to both sides, but the main biggest reason is Mexico bluefin is much, much larger, um, which means the fat content is much more, um, which brings out more flavor in the fish as well. So to, today's bluefin tuna is about 15 pounds um, of almost pure meat. And if you look, so about this part would be the akami. And then about this portion to this portion would be chutoro. And then from here and here would be the otoro. And if you look, so this may look a little small, but this is only the um, so the head would be about right here, uh, which kama would be here. And I usually like to get the second cut and then the fish would, the tail would look somewhere about here. So today's is about 380 pound tuna. Yeah. So over here would be somewhere like, uh, almost like a rib cage. So there's bones um, going in different directions. That's why we try to be careful around this area. So the akami would be the red meat that you would see. That's the closest to the bone area, um, which doesn't have any, it's not fatty. It's very pure and has like, um, 
like almost like a jelly texture. And then this would be the pure akami where the bone would be somewhere, the center bone would be around over here. So, and then I have the pure meat now, so I just have to portion it out. One easy thing is I would measure with my four fingers. That's the size of the nigiri that I will prepare to, the length of it. So I would make sure this, so this is the line that I would want my cut to. And then I will start the first cut of the chutoro. So which um, I would think it's about to over here. So this portion is chutoro. And like, like I say, I try to be honest with the customer um, because it is right if you can say chutoro is up to over here or otoro is up to here. So it's really up to the chef how they will serve the tuna. So even with the same chutoro, so the one closer to the middle will have a, a firmer texture than someone to a piece from closer to the bone. So this would be the same chutoro but a different and it will have a different taste as well. Then you can start to see more fat lines go across and like it's a little more firm because it's the center area, but if we go more towards the bottom of the belly, it will become more very soft and uh, melting bluefin tuna. From that huge bluefin tuna, you're only gonna be able to get maybe 10% of otoro from uh, maybe a 400 pound tuna. So which, and also which is very popular. Um, people know bluefin tuna because of otoro. That's why um, it is much more pricier. And chutoro, there's more portion, but it's um, much smaller than akami as well. And akami would be almost along all sides of the back area. So bluefin tuna would have a lot of akami. That's why the price would be um, more reasonable than the chutoro and otoro. Okay, so I have uh, three different cuts. I have the akami, chutoro, and otoro. And I'm gonna be using these three cuts to make the bluefin donburi. So. The fish of the one we would use would be about maybe fifteen to $20,000. But I, of course, I'm getting a portion of it, so I'm not paying the full $20,000. So what I have noticed is this part um, in maybe Japan, Korea, Asia, we would call this the belly button part. Um, in Asia, people love this because this represents that this uh, otoro cut is the best cut. But um, this part is a little more chewy and I find with my customers, they don't like this part. So I actually cut this part off and just serve it like as this. Um, maybe just like you may know, people don't know too much about it yet. It's maybe if some people, you know, even if food tastes bad, but they know it's good for you, they eat it. Maybe it's just the same thing. It has very, a lot of fat content and very good taste, but the texture is very chewy. So I think people are still not really into it. And even this part. So this is the this is a lot of fat between the skin and the meat. It's it has a unique texture, and I find people don't like it here, or this one as well. So I actually take this one out too. So if you look, only the otoro has this much fat between the skin and the meat. Chutoro would have like a little bit. Akami has nothing. So it really represents uh, the otoro and. I, I think in Western food, there's not much food that has texture like this. It's like a soft bone, so people don't really like it. So why do you decide to score it? 
In like nigiri, they say the soy sauce gets in better in between the skins. That would be the main purpose, but I like doing it because um, when I put knife, um, I can make the fish into the shape that I want better. And I find, yes, the soy sauce gets in better, so more taste as well. And on, maybe not for bluefin, but on some fish, so the muscle that goes through the string, it's uh, sometimes a little chewy, that's why we break it up too. So they don't have that uh, string in their mouth. This is the rice we made a, uh, about an hour and a half ago. So it's good to use right away. And this one is quite new. It's a good, very good to keep the rice in the perfect temperature. So. A lot of people say it's as uh, important as the, as the fish. Um, there's probably at least one to two secrets uh, about how to make the rice for every different chef. So I have my ways, but really honestly, the, um, getting the right water ratio, it's really not easy as it sounds because every packaging of rice may need different portion of water. So figuring that out on each rice is the most important uh, other than having a great recipe. This, this is like seaweed and sesame for a little more seasoning for the rice in donburis. And like I mentioned, this is the house-made soy sauce. So I put a little bit on the rice. And this is a shiso leaf from Japan as well. Um, we use a lot of this for our sashimi. Um, I think it's becoming more recognized by everybody. Um, they're just knowing that it goes very well with the fish and it helps you digest the fish as well. So I would put two of the otoro on the top. And then... So food-wise, this is it. And then I would use more um, decoration. This one is the fresh grated wasabi. Um, I usually have it prepared, um, but like I say, it's very the time right now. We don't know how much we're gonna use. So it's hard to keep it, but fresh wasabi is needed for uh, this kind of quality fish. So this is the regular wasabi. Yeah. You know, it's too powder, like oh. powder. Okay. So we use powder and then mix it with water. This, to be honest, it's too expensive to serve uh, with everything. Mm -hmm. Say with the rolls, mm -hmm. this would cost as much as the roll. Really? <laughs> yeah. So maybe oh. one wasabi stem is about $20. Oh. And you're gonna be getting maybe six, seven servings. So that's why it's really hard to balance out. One thing that you do is you put gold flakes. Yeah. So the gold plate itself, it comes from Japan as well. It's uh, actually real gold. Um, it is quite pricey, but I believe in the saying where nowadays people eat with your eyes. Um, I liked not just the bluefin, I like all my menu, all my plates to be very nice when it goes to the customer. So they will have a good first impression. So gold flake, I think it's just a very nice touch at the end. I wouldn't use too much, just a little bit as like point. And I think gold really looks good on the really dark red. <laughs> These are all edible flowers that I use. Um, this one is Hanano, but it's also known as like a Shiso uh, leaf. So this will have same similar taste as the Shiso leaf. So I try to use the decoration where it's 
um, not just the decoration, where you can actually have it with the food. Mm. And I so can, you can eat it. Yeah, not the whole, just the purple oh, flower. Yeah. yeah. So the good point that you put on mine. Yes. Am I eating like a dollar? Uh, yes, or even maybe even more. But for that kind of stuff, I don't take that cost uh, into the food cost. That's just me, me doing it because I like to. Because I think it's not reasonable. Some people not, might not want the gold flake and have a, maybe a little cheaper. So gold flake, I like to think of it as I'm doing it for my fun.